check. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Robbie Robert here, and I'm back with another tutorial. Um, you guys seem to like some of the landscape tutorials, so and I enjoy painting landscapes, so let's paint a landscape today. Um, I'm going to kind of wing it because I haven't thrown a tutorial out in a while, so bear with me. But uh, we can jump right into this. Um, I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna do sort of like a foggy field and we'll kind of play with it from there. Um, I'm starting off with a soft round brush, just a default brush. I'm just brushing in a color right now. Uh, I think I'm gonna go. It's kind of greenish. I want to go more bluish. I am working with a, a Wacom Intuos 4 Pro tablet, the older ones, um, and I'm on Photoshop CS6. I know that gets asked all the time in the comments, so hopefully you will avoid one of those comments. Trying to get the perfect sky color in there. All right, and I just have one background layer there. Uh, I'm gonna make a new layer, and I kind of want to make. Let's see. So I don't want the horizon line to be directly in the center, um, horizontally all the way across. Um, I'm going to put it a little bit lower, but that can always change. And since I have this new um, horizon line and whatnot on different layers, I can kind of you know, if I want to try it higher, I'm just kind of looking at <clears throat> this as some trees in the way background. Um, obviously, it's nothing yet, but I'm just kind of chiseling that in. There we go. Um, uh, you know, actually, I kind of like it higher up. Um, for kind of this field thing that we're going for. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. Um, I can switch, I'll, I'll say some hotkeys too if I think of them along the way. Um, I can switch between these two colors using X, just tapping X. So I can save that color right there if I want, um, even though I can grab it. It's just a nice tool to have. Uh, let's go ahead and throw. See what this looks like in there. Uh, that's not quite what I'm going for. Let's see. I'm just slowly building it in. I'm going from a softer brush um, and I'll slowly get, um, make the hardness increase as I um, progress with the painting. I'm still just using 
the softest default brush there is. Sky looks a little too bright. <clears throat> I hope my pen is not catching on the mic. That would be very annoying for you guys. And I apologize if it is. So I'm just throwing little splashes of color in there for um, kind of like these trees that are far, far off. Um, yeah, I know it looks like a blurry mess right now, but it is getting there. Hmm, let's go with this brush. This is one that I use very often. Um, it's in that darkened pack that I have listed before. Just throwing in some texture here just so I can do it a little bit quicker. I was kind of going the long way, but I figured you guys don't enjoy the dilly-dallying. <laughs> in there. Too saturated. Just kind of using one of these um, cloud type brushes. I, I often use them for clouds. Um, just kind of uh, building up layers more and more in the background. I can shrink it down too, and it can look like some nice, um, nice shrubbery, nice greenery on these trees. So zoomed up, it may look like a mess, but zoomed back, it looks like a bigger mess. <laughs> no, I sometimes like to work um, pretty zoomed out on the canvas so I can see the overall picture. 
and then I only work my way up closer and closer um, and zoom farther in as I get farther into the painting. Ball type lead color in there. There's this hard edge. There shouldn't be any hard edges in this tree line. It should be, I want it to look really natural. Trying to get some texture in the field. And throw on some colors. Excuse me one second. And some leg on my brush there.
using the Alt key to quick select um, with the eyedropper tool. Most of you should know that by now, hopefully. Keys aren't working for sizing up my brushes. So I'm not talking so much. I have not painted in a while. So my creative brain is kind of, well, not my creative brain, the creative side of my brain, creative portion, whatever creativity comes from. I have no idea. It's working pretty hard right now. So I'm thinking, and it's hard for me to think and talk at the same time. <laughs> so now some of these trees are going to be more of the background color um, they will be farther off in the distance so I'm picking up a little of the background color I'll brush over this greenish that I've been painting with and then um, I can push those farther into the background so it looks like they're behind them and farther into the atmosphere, which causes the discoloration from the sky and atmosphere, yeah, no? I just don't want anything to look too alike in this, um, which will take away from the nature feel of it, I guess. I cannot talk right now. try this brush out. It's kind of like a treetop brush. I've not even used it before. Here, get some good textures out of it maybe. The drivers on my iMac for the walk room are kind of messed up and I can't seem to get it to work properly. But I have to paint so it has to go on.
It's a nib on my stylus is starting to run out. I can hear it squeaking. I apologize if you can too. Brush is kind of nice for texture. I'm gonna try one of these other ones. Not sure what the results will be like, but it's part of the fun. some greens in here. Uh, let's go with this one. That was my hand, I swear. see how many of you ask about this brush um, it should be in that darken pack at darken.com who is a phenomenal um, artist 
uh, it's D-A-A-R-K-E-N, and under his tutorial selection, uh, blah, tutorial drop down menu, whatever, <coughs> um, you can find his brush pack there, and I use him quite frequently. He has some amazing brushes in there that you can just, you know, do a one little stroke and all of a sudden it looks, you know, it's just phenomenal. So uh, definitely check out his site, check out his work. He's super good. Giving him a little free ad in my videos because he has some awesome free uh, resources. Kind of have a you know decent um, setting, I guess. Grab this cloud like brush. I'm kind of just brushing in this back uh, background color, um, just pushing stuff farther into the background that needs to be adding some fog and whatnot. picked a little bit lighter of a color um, so I can kind of make some tree accents here where light you know would be hitting some of the leaves and just a little bit of a highlight don't be afraid to throw in some bonus colors throw another like reddish
that. So I just have one layer right now. Uh, sometimes when I'm painting, um, uh, sometimes the contrast I feel like can be thrown off just a little bit. Not that I want to go to that extreme, but sometimes I could just don't hit the values. Um, what terms are looking for? So you don't be afraid to use any of the adjustment um, adjustment layers under layer new adjustment layer. Um, bunch of cool features that you can. Bunch of cool tools I should say that you can use. That you really sh should use. Uh, all right. Let's. Putting in a little like telephone pole thing, um, kind of like a man-made feature into here, just to try it out. I have it on a new layer in case I don't like it. about the value right now. It's pretty dark for where it is, but that's okay. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna mess with the color on that right now. I'll wait till I put it in the log. Alright. So now I'm gonna grab a large soft round brush and I. Hmm. 
new layer, and I'm gonna brush in some of this fog. So on this fog layer, I applied a layer mask, which is right down here. Um, layer mask is white, which means everything on that layer is showing. If I paint, if I select the layer mask and paint with black, it will mask away um, that area. So, in a sense, I can erase without actually erasing any pixels. It's just really hiding them. Um, so, uh, is that also, oh, I see what I did, the wires on the same layer as the fog. Now. So now I'm going to brush in with a large brush onto uh, this fog layer. Drop the opacity down a little bit. So you can see a little bit of that horizon. And then you can kind of chop it up if you want to make it look, you know, a little bit more random, but whatever. So now I'm gonna, I, uh, I'm gonna create a clipping mask layer over that telephone pole. So anything I paint on that will only be shown uh, where that pole is. everything um, because I prefer to have less layers. I'd rather just paint.
I'm just rendering out this uh, telephone pole now. can we throw in to make this interesting? So I think I'm gonna put some like robot thing back here. Um, let's see. Uh, so I have a new layer. I'm gonna set it to darken so I don't affect anything else here. Uh, let's see. the general shape down and then I will go back and refine this a little bit more just using the same I'll bring it up this the brush that I'm using um, it's in that brush pack it's the one I've been using for the majority of this uh, yeah so same brush just doing harder straighter uh, strokes with that I'm just kind of building a, I don't know, some big old robot machine. That's way off in the distance here. Kind of want to get it in motion a little bit so it's not so static, but let's see. Notice how when I brought it down here, since it's set to darken, it's not bringing those lighter values into here because the layer will only darken 
over things that um, layer that or the value that I'm painting is darker um, than that. So. kind of do just like a generic, I don't know, big machine thing. I think this, I don't know how long I've been at this, maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Um, I just wanted to keep it, you know, somewhat quick, simple, um, just so you guys can get some, you know, I don't know, studies out or something, a little bit of practice. Um, just try to be free with your paintings and just have fun with them. So now I'm going to go back, I, I'm going to put a mask over it um, just by hitting this little button down here. And then I'm going to paint with black to mask out um, the shapes that I don't want. Like that. Sometimes I'll I'll take like the uh, polygon tool and then you can just uh, draw out hard lines um, so then you can get a more uh, defined edge if that's what you're going for. My Photoshop's kind of being weird right now. So now I have that selection on the paint with black there, and that's going to mask out just like that to give me that defined edge. If I hold the shift key, I can um, add to the selection if I want to do, you know, different areas. My tablet's kind of being weird with the selection tool, so. Proceed without it. trying to have fun with it and you know make something creative. It doesn't have to have, you know, maybe this isn't a machine used in war. Um, this seems to be the theme that a lot of artists will lean towards. Um, is like, you know, um, machines for war, um, not for like, you know, maybe this one's for agriculture or something farming way off in a field here. I don't know, it could be anything. Um, I find that way more interesting when an artist is able to portray something that isn't used for war, that isn't, doesn't have giant guns all over it, that doesn't have you know, shit like that. Excuse my language.
doing some like, like little hanging like wire things. different things and I'll undo. Um, the one thing that I nice about masking is you're not really deleting the pixels, you're just masking it out, but you know, I'll still just control Z or Decent. So I'm gonna since I have that now, I'm gonna create a new layer above it. Um, I will grab this kind of cloud-like brush. I'm gonna grab this background color and kind of just lightly brush over it to push um, some atmosphere over this to kind of push it back into the background even farther. Even though it is kind of back there, so it's gonna you know bring it into. into the environment that it's actually sitting in now. Now I'm seeing something else. Kind of jumping all over the place. Not liking this weird little thing here. Sorry if I click out of the Photoshop once in a while, it's just because it's not cooperating with me. Gonna add some, uh, you know, um, see if I can put like a little, I don't know, vehicle or something in here to kind of add a human presence into the scene. So I'll gonna be on a new layer just in case I do not like it. <laughs> kind of throwing it in there to see compositionally if it's going to work.
kind of a rough. to sit back and look at it. I'm not sure if these things might want to keep. kind of putting a little bit of a dirt road into here. <clears throat> Go back and mask it with the kind of a cloudy brush um, so that the fog kind of look more natural. Oops, wrong brush. Kind of adding new elements to this to see how they work. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep any of them, but You know, and sometimes I'll, you know, if you can find a nice like photo texture, maybe there's something you want to composite into it. Like if you want to put like a car um, into there, sometimes you can find an old, you know, rusty car photo or something that you can plop in there and then kind of paint over and use some of the textures. And um, that can be really good practice too. Um, but keep in mind, you know, using those textures and using all that isn't going to make you into an amazing painter. Um, I still recommend, you know, drawing a lot of stuff by hand if you can, uh, you know, just get better and better um, in that sense. I'm kind of just putting in a fence line right here. 
just add to it a little bit more. Uh, sometimes after this, I'll you know I can crop some of the photo if I'm not liking it too much. All right, I'm gonna create a new layer, apply image, um, and I'm gonna do. I'll try a little bit of smart sharpen on here. I'm gonna try cranking it up quite a bit. crisper edges. Um, let's see. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna dupe that layer. And I'm gonna go through and kind of blur. So I'm gonna try blurring. Oh actually uh, do Gaussian blur of like 2.5 and I'll put a solid black mask onto it and then go back in with my uh, soft round brush and brush in white where I want the blur to be. You can also do something similar with the history brush um, if you wanted to. Basically the same results. Oops, not paying white. Just want to see if this is going to help a little bit with the depth, even though I don't have too much in the foreground right now. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to try throwing a gradient map on just a little bit to see what kind of uh, effects I can get from that. I'm going to do a high pass, uh, create a new layer, high pass, do a soft light. apply a mask to it. And by using the mask I can just softly brush out what I want to um, what I want out, what I want to keep. I can drop the opacity, you know, and it kind of starts to look a little bit more natural. Now I can go back. I'm going to actually paint over. Um, Some of this. Just 
because some of it needs to change a little bit to fit more into the um, world I've created right here. Now sometimes the lighting will be different on the image. Um, colors, you know, will usually be a little bit different. Sometimes you can desaturate the photo when you drop it in. Um, go through it. Keep this in a group and brush out more of this. Although I do kind of like um, some of that yellowish. It's not bad. These yellows and greens. So in this way, you're sometimes able to you know, utilize photos um, to a huge advantage. Adjustment layer. I want to kind of um, actually even this up here. Sometimes using uh, certain adjustment layers overall can help balance your photo together. Um, gradient map, ma uh, excuse me, gradient maps, especially. Um, you can get an overall move from them, which is really nice.
capacity. Just a nice foggy morning. You know. If you've ever been out in the country when it's pretty foggy, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And do another sharpen. Putting a curve on there. Adjust my layers. Hmm. You know, I think I think it's probably good right now. All right. Well, that's pretty much that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I hope this helped. Um, Hope you guys kind of feel confident to just go out there and paint and have fun with it. Uh, feel free to leave some comments, um, ask any questions. Uh, thanks again, guys, for watching.